Hi there everybody. On today's video um, I have this Mercedes C-Class. This is a C180 compressor 2004 um, and um, we have a problem with the ESP. So um, when you drive the car, um, not all the time, but the ESP uh, message comes on the dash. At the moment it says no malfunctions, so it tends, it disappears, but when you drive it, it comes back. Uh, like I said, it's a bit in intermittent. Anyway, we had, um, we had some noise coming from the suspension end, um, which we fixed. It was a um, slightly worn wishbone um, arms. Um, that fixed the noise and then we had uh, some tracking done as well um, but that didn't sort out the ESP situation um, so at this point we believe we have a, a faulty ESP unit um, and that um, which is basically um, the focal that we're getting is the, the steering angle sensor it's um, it's faulty um, which then flags up the ESP light. So, just gonna show you if if it's in there. I'm not sure, but the full code that we get. Just have to get the ignition on. Otherwise, that doesn't. Okay. So this. Have a look. Okay, so I've got those two full codes there. A fault in communication with the control unit, steering uh, column module, and steering angle sensor internal fault. Um, I, I've noticed that I can, I can delete those, but um, they do come back. Um, so, anyway, I'm gonna be changing that module. That module is this one here. This is from uh, Mercedes. That's the part number A one six nine four six four one five one eight. Um, and uh, you should read that little note in there as well if you're gonna attempt this yourself um, but it's just the danger of uh, damaging certain things so you have to be careful and also if your car is produced before September 2003 you need to cut the red mark guide slot the one that they show there So pay attention to that. Um, this is a 2004, so obviously I won't, it, I won't be doing that. Um, this one is uh, being modified. The angle sensor looks like that, and also this sensor has. this red pin here that keeps it in position so it keeps it from moving um, and we won't we will not be taking this out until this is being fitted to the car and we should not touch those pins either just handle it with care it's not a cheap part if you buy it brand new but they also uh, uh, we have not had many of these failing very very rare but I have changed a few um, so now I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery um, turn this off okay. 
and I'm gonna disconnect the battery because we need to remove the um, the steering wheel and to do that we need to remove the airbag so battery needs to be off I'm just gonna be using this to wedge the steering from turning because um, it is a little bit tight to undo the center bolt to remove the steering wheel um, and normally you need somebody to hold it for you or well you have to find a method of doing it so I'm gonna try this way I'm gonna attempt it because there's no one here to help me at the moment if it doesn't work I'll have to do it later um, so a 10 mil to disconnect the battery I'm gonna disconnect the negative side and a T25 I'm gonna use for removing the two torques that hold the, the airbag into place also um, I've got a power bar here as you may have seen and that will be to undo that center bolt that holds the steering wheel in um, it's a lot easier to use a power bar than trying to do it with a small ratchet but I don't remember the size of the um, bolt so we'll check that once I remove this so okay I'm gonna remove the um, battery terminal and then we can begin um, ideally we want to keep this straight so actually just before I remove the the battery terminal I'm going to undo I'm just going to undo the little torques, torques screws that are here take it out all the way just yet but Okay, so ideally we want to have this in the center. So I've got it in the center now and I remove the key. So obviously it's also gonna be locked in there, but um, I'm going to remove the negative side of the battery now. Let's have a look at that. So I got the this box off. This has got the um, pollen filter in it, and that's my negative there. Again, I've already loosened it, so I can just take it out. I'm just gonna put that to one side, so it doesn't come out. And now we can concentrate on removing the airbag.
Also, I'm going to use a small um, flathead screwdriver. Okay, so I'm just going to take the Torx out from this side. They may not come out, but um, they're just gonna loosen. They're gonna come off of these. Okay, so we have those uh, connections there. We just need to um, take them out. So I'm gonna pull this little orange center here. And also this gray cable here. That one is held in by a tiny, tiny little pin. Which, if you if you lift that bit there a little bit, it will release it. You can almost just pull it out, really. Um, now these ones are a little bit harder to pull out, but once you release the orange locks here, then you should be able to take them out. Um, one of them and that's the other one now we can get these to one side Okay, so we need an Allen, an Allen to fit that there. Okay, that is a 10, a 10 mil Allen. So we need to open that. Definitely quite tight. Okay. Let's 
try that again. That's loose now. So that did work. In this little warning leaflet, it says that the indicator should be in a zero position or a neutral, basically don't have it down or up don't have it like you're indicating to the left or to the right it needs to be in the center um, otherwise um, danger of damage the self-cancellation pin okay so I'm just gonna loosen the, the steering here because we need to pull it so I just loosened it while this was there it doesn't jump out or anything and attack me okay so now <clears throat> just carefully Okay, now we need to undo the three little, um, three small Torx screws in there. So those are a T10. Okay, so that comes out, that just unplugs from in there, all in one piece. So here we have, that's the new one. Um, just not the position, there's a little, like a little arrow here. Also note that the screw holes from behind will line up with this. So we can secure it. Those are tiny little torques, um, you could easily break them if you 
put too much force on them but um, once you feel they are quite tight I could carry on turning this at the moment but if I do um, I risk damaging those so I mean just make sure they are tight to the fill And the next thing to do will be to fit the steering wheel now um, and for that we need to remove the little red pin here Just note the not sure if I can capture that here, but there's two black marks on the on the rack on on the uh, steering wheel um, where where we bolt where we put our bolt, there's two marks and you will also notice uh, on the column, I mean, on the steering column here, there's two little marks um, that there is a large there's a large notch on the actual steering wheel itself there's one there and there's one at the top. Those two line up with this line. And that's, how, that's the way you have to fit it. Basically the way it came out. But you will notice that you have those two. Just as a guidance really. Um, the steering... Um, angle sensor, the module, also has that piece there that will come out through this hole. That piece there. Um, I think the reason that we lock this into place when we fit it, it's so so to avoid this from coming apart or even from if you if you turn this um, all the way by mistake um, and then you fit it, it it will align it will align itself again but it will be one turn to the left or one turn to the right and that will be a problem um, it will get damaged inside um, anyway we can push this in now and we can get our
bolt back in there. Okay, now I'm gonna get the airbag back in there. So yellow, yellow, green, green. So I'm just pushing them in, they kind of lock in place. And then we can push the little orange tags in. That just locks them in there. And then we have that gray wire. Plugs on top. Our Torx um, screws are just in here, they remain in there. Okay, I'm just gonna get the uh, battery terminal back on. Okay, so so now I'm gonna get um, the computer back plugged in and delete the phone codes that were there, and we can test drive the car. The message on the screen at the moment that message says ESP not available.
You may have noticed that my left indicator was on when I switched on the car, but that was because uh, when I finished installing this, I got this down so I can uh, screw the little forks from the back here. Uh, but obviously once this is in, once the module is in really, um, then you're safe with this. Just start accessing the ESP. And the same phone calls as before. I'm just gonna clear them off. So no full codes present. Um, steering angle, just have a quick look. Okay, that seems to be um, seems to be working or measuring okay um, what's left to do now for me is I'm gonna test drive the car um, and make sure that fault doesn't come back so uh, after deleting the codes um, After deleting the codes, um, we have no malfunctions anymore. Um, I just had an ABS message there. Uh, that's because if you access the, if you access that in there, um, that happens. That comes on uh, because the computer thinks that we're testing the system. So. But anyway, uh, when when you come out of that menu, so I just come out. And back again. And then that goes away. So that's not uh, a problem there. Um, so now we have no malfunctions. But like I said, need to test drive the car and make sure that um, issue doesn't come back because before it was intermittent. So I certainly hope that changing that piece has repaired the, the issue because it's not a cheap part. Um, I think it's around 300 pounds new. So I'm just taking a taking the car for a little test drive uh 
hopefully um, it will remain with no full coats. Also just want to make sure that um, <clears throat> the cruise control is working and uh, the ESP button switches off the ESP. Control is also um, it's working fine. I just want to point out that um, the speedometer in this car is in kilometers, so that there is reading uh, 40 kilometers an hour, um, not 50 or 60 or 70. So 50 kilometers an hour is around 30 miles per hour. Um, and again, uh, this car is a Japanese import, and that's why the The speedometer is in kilometers. So, so far so good. I'll just drive a little bit more and I'll get back to the garage and we'll see what's happening. 